and it's recording right now. Jordan, you see, is it? Yes. Hang on. Okay, welcome everybody. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about football. Football. Well, come on. It is Super Bowl Sunday, everybody, and we get a chance to see an amazing, uh, I, I don't know. Look, if you're into football, if you're not into football, each to his own. But there is some significance to today is that we have Tom Brady at the age of, what is he, 43? is in his 10th Super Bowl. And there's only been 55. So 10 out of 55 is an absolutely uh, an amazing accomplishment uh, in terms of, of sporting success. And that's something that we can, we can all go, wow, that, that is impressive. And if he wins today, he will win his seventh Super Bowl. He's up against the defending champion in Patrick Mahomes, uh, the old against the young. It's got all the stories. But I was looking at a, at a 2007 uh, article and and it, it just became significant back in that's amazing 2007 that's like you know 13 14 years ago now uh, yeah I guess it was coming to 2008 so that would have been 13 years ago in December that the New England Patriots where Tom Brady was the quarterback had a perfect 16 and 0 season they were perfect. It was an amazing accomplishment in, in sports. But the, the trouble was that now as they went into the playoffs, one loss and perfection would have been blown. That would have been it. Uh, everything would have been wiped away. And it's the first time since the Miami Dolphins had a perfect 17-0 season that included the playoffs. They won the Super Bowl that anybody had had done per perfect. And so what is really perfect and what are we aiming for in our walk in the Lord? Well, when we take a look at it, the most important goal for us or the most important vision for us in being perfect is that we want to be there for the millennium, the millennium, not the millennium Falcon, sorry, Jordan, but the millennium where we are ruling and reigning with Christ. Ruling and reigning with Christ. That's a promise that is coming in Revelation, where there is going to be a time when Jesus is going to return. The dead in Christ are going to be raised up first, and we will meet him in the air. And then this mess that is on the earth will be cleaned up. And as one pastor said, we'll be government workers. Some will be given a broom. Some will be given a clipboard. And we will be tasked with the, the great leader the king of all kings, Jesus Christ, ascending to the throne, and we will be there with him for 1,000 years, cleaning up the mess that is on the earth and setting things right. And then after that, eternity. Eternity with, with Jesus. And what a wonderful time that's going to be. I know as we go through our day-to-day -day life, the aches and pains, the troubles that we come against, that uh, there is nothing to be downheartened by. As Jordan said in his testimony, it is a time to be uplifted, to be encouraged, to be enthusiastic, to be happy and excited that as we see the things going on, and I get it, there's a lot of people out there that, that don't have a lot of good to say about Christians. In fact, you know, as I was talking about in the Supreme Court ruling, there were three judges that, that uh, were really against the churches, that they did not see the balance in the, you know, the restaurants or the theaters or, or whatever other businesses were open, the Costco's and the, the Walmarts and, and, and other places. But somehow the churches, that seemed okay in their eyes because this were somehow, uh, you know, crazy people that are, are extreme in our views. We're not extreme at all. We shouldn't be. Well, maybe we could be extreme if it depends on a person's definition of extreme these days. But the end of the day is that we believe that God loved the world, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have eternal life. And we believe that when Jesus said, unless you are born again of water and of the spirit, you will not enter nor see the kingdom of heaven. And all the people said, amen. And we need to be 
enthusiastic and excited about that. And if that's extreme, so be it. But we need to walk with that confidence, walk with that happy smile, knowing that our lives are measured by God and by the word of God. And each day that we get together in fellowship, uh, as uh, one sister and I were talking, is that the Bible says we got to get together in fellowship. Absolutely. So who are we going to obey? God or man? We need to be getting together. We need to find ways to fellowship, to build each other up, to remind each other of the good things and the good team that we are a part of. You know, it's just the football Talk of all football talks, right? So go get them. Hit them high. Hit them low. Get them when they're down. Get them when they're up. And onward to the touchdown. So back to the New England thing. This was an interesting quote. One of the secrets of the New England had been the coach keeping them level-headed. It's amazing. Bill Belichick is still coaching New England, even 13 years later. But uh, here you go. So the compliments started coming in. Look at you guys. Look at you. Everybody's so great. You're so wonderful. So as the compliments were coming in and as the world was telling them how good they are, he was reminding them that there is still more. The press asked if the players could walk on water. Now there's a reference. And he responded, I'll show them the game tape. And I guarantee you after they see the game tape, <laughs> they will not be able to walk on water. They'll realize it and come to that conclusion. There's more work to do. So the word perfect is in the Bible 98 times. 98 times. That's significant. Because you know what 98 is? Anybody that's doing math? 12 times 7. Perfect government. God's number 98 times the word perfect is in the Bible. 98 is 12 times 7. And uh, I, I don't think that's insignificant to just gloss aside. All right, Jocelyn's going to try and share the screen now. And we'll see how we do on this. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. And then we need to go to the down arrow. Dude, we're just waiting, almost there. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. You can read it in the King James. I'm just going to read it out of a modern translation. He is a rock. What he does is perfect. His work is perfect. All his ways are fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. He is honorable and reliable and that's the first significant thing that we have is uh that's fine that's the first significant thing to understand is that god is perfect and once we we read that in the word and once we start to understand that everything that is is a part of his plan and his purpose is perfect we can start to buy into it it's just like with Bill Belichick, the coach of the New England Patriots at the time, was that the players were, were taught that here's the playbook. Now, if the players had any doubt in the playbook, they might try to add lib. And if they added lib, they might be successful. Let's face it, I've been a sports coach, and I know sometimes the players don't follow the playbook, and sometimes they're successful. And that might be the way in the world is that some people might say, hey, I, who needs the Bible? We'll just kind of pick and choose and we'll and you might be successful for a time. But to get that long term success, you need to understand that the playbook is perfect. And the playbook is written by God. You got to trust the coach. You got to trust the leadership that's out there. And if we got a good quarterback named Jesus Christ who gave us the Holy Spirit. That's like our, our, our headset, where if we are praying in the Holy Spirit, then we can hear the guy up in the press box giving us the plays and calling out the, you know, blue 42, blue 42, Omaha, Omaha, and set, hut, and 
off they go. And if we are praying in the Holy Spirit, then we've got the headset on that is giving us the instructions to life and and how to how to be prosperous so you know it's just it's it's a beautiful thing and if you know you're you're finding that okay maybe i'm not having time or otherwise well you, you can always click on to the youtube channel and the victoria revival fellowship we've got a daily scripture a daily bible nugget uh anthony thought 15 minutes was too long so i've reduced it by two minutes and uh and now it's in the in 10 to 12 minute range and you can listen to that. It's got uh, some scriptures and some thoughts and some words for the day that might be something to incorporate. Uh, if you're finding five minutes while you're driving in the car, praying in the Holy Spirit, you don't have to pray in tongues out loud. You can pray under your breath. But if you're doing that, that's starting to get to the point where that headset and that communication is going to be there. And you're just going to know that that next play is going to be play action to the wide receiver breaking open down the sideline. He may go all the way and touchdown Tampa Bay. Okay. Or Kansas city or whatever it is, but you know, that's the excitement about, you know, when you are in the zone, when, when the new England Patriots and for anybody that remembers the story, unfortunately, new England in the, you know, the last play of the game, the Odell Beckham and all that, uh, Eli Manning and the, the catch, the amazing catch. To this day, I still don't know how he caught the football. If you don't know, you have to look at the highlights. But uh, uh, New England lost to the New York Giants in the Super Bowl, and their perfect season was ended. New York Giants were the Super Bowl champion. But New England at that point had been perfect. And if it hadn't been for uh, the catch – the uh, the impossible wouldn't have happened and New England would have defeated New York and uh, and won the Super Bowl and completed the perfect season. All right, let's go back to uh, share screen. Psalm 18, verse 30. We'll go through a couple of the Psalms and see what David said as he was writing it. Down arrow. There we go. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord, is, the Lord of Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. In the uh, a new translation, it says, the promise of the Lord has proven to be true. He is a shield to all those that take refuge in him. And we remember Psalm 91, one as well under the shelter of his wings. Will I rejoice? Will not fear this will not fear that he's got us. He's got us covered. We got to trust in that. And if we skip down to verse 32, while we have it, God arms me with strength makes my way perfect or it's God that girdeth me with strength. So we just pray that we can embrace the strength that he has given us in our day-to-day -day chores, whether it's on your way to the office where Bobby was telling us that he was on isolation up in the upstairs. Now they're letting him go downstairs and actually do some work in the main area. You know, pretty soon you'll be off and going on site and all that fun stuff. Jordan, if he's out there doing deliveries, Janine and Jocelyn sitting there, at the at the care home when uh, when the residents are screaming at them to come and spend some time with them that the lord give their arms strength to look out for them and uh, so we see all of these these things that are are happening out there you know anthony suddenly gets called to go do a a, a clean a bed or clean an or room that has just been occupied and he's got to get all suited up in this personal protective equipment give him that strength to be able to to deal with it and all of us need that strength whether we're going into meetings whether we're uh, getting on zoom or any of that stuff it's just good to know that the lord is our strength and that he's done it all and in uh, the next verse while we're there i guess jocelyn you're still sharing screen We'll just keep it up and then we'll go on. So it says, mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. 
that's something. And then one more scripture. We'll just go down to the next one. And uh, Jesus puts it this way. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which in heaven is perfect. And you can unshare screen. So as we look at those things, we have examples. We have heroes of faith. We have many lessons. But for a lot of people, that's a lot of pressure. Be perfect is not, I, I can't be perfect. You know, I get, I still get angry. I still get frustrated. Well, draw alongside. Welcome to the club. The only perfect man that ever lived. The only perfect man that ever lived, Mark the perfect man, was Jesus. He's the perfect man. That's an example, something to be aspired for. But I think we need to understand the forgiveness that there's now therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So that's the significant. If we are walking in the spirit, then we are praying in the spirit, reading the word, making sure that God comes first each day. And when we wake up in the morning, each night when we lay down to bed, when it's meeting time, we're making sure that, hey, look, I, you know, I'm going to take an hour out of my day and, you know, or out of my week, two hours on a Sunday, maybe an hour on a Wednesday, maybe once in a while on a Friday night. And I'm going to have some fellowship with the saints of the Lord, build each other up and make sure that the team is stronger. Right. You know, it's just like the New England Patriots when they were going 16 and 0. You know, they had training camp, they had rigorous practices, and each teammate looked out for each other. And if somebody fell down, made a mistake, there was somebody there to pick up the pieces and, and continue on with the game. You know, interception meant that the defense had to be that much stronger to prevent a score. You know, and uh, on the other side, if the defense... Uh, let one by and suddenly they ran the ball in through an open hole for a touchdown. It meant the offense had to go out there and all right, let's grind it out and let's get one back. And that's the way it is often in our life is that we are teammates together in the Lord, in the fellowship of the Lord. And for anybody that's listening to this video afterwards, you are very welcome to join our team. This is a wonderful, blessed team, and we need new members. We need new people to come along and say, hey, that's where I want to be long. That's what I want. I want to be built up. I want to support. I want to build others up. And what can I do to help out with the fellowship? And as I said, you know, the lives get busy. Things come along. The world takes over. But if we are wanting to enjoy more things, then we put more time into the Lord and we will enjoy our time together. As long as we are keeping God first in our life, that is the most important and significant thing. You know, let's get together and watch the football game today. Let's go out for a hike in the woods. And let's sing some songs. It doesn't always have to be you know, some people will think, oh, you know, you guys, all you're doing is just dancing on clouds, playing harps like the angels. That seems boring. But no, it's not. It's, I keep saying it. It's just the people that have that perception of us are really misunderstanding. You know, I have had more fun being in the Lord than by running off with some of the things that, that my friends, some of the things that I did in my past now since i've been in the lord and yeah there's struggles when people will come up and mock you and say ah you know you, you i don't want to hang out with you because you're just going to preach the gospel not all the time i'll watch the football game let's let's see what brady does on this play let's see if they can make the stop let's analyze this and let's have some fun uh, looking at that let's uh, take a look at this take a look at that let's talk about this talk about that it's a wide variety of stuff but in the end the most significant thing is that you're absolutely right. God comes first in my life, as it should for all of us. As it should for all of us. You know, and, and Miguel knows that on the trip to Mexico. You know, we, we might 
hey, a day at the beach, but what am I doing? I'm talking about the things of the Lord to people, any opportunity to witness to people, to encourage people, to pray for people, to see people that are hurting and down and out, have an opportunity of the same joy that I have received when the Lord came to me and filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I realized that everything that I had and everything I offered was a gift of God, that his son died for me. And not only for me, but for all my enemies, for anybody that was out there, and that I could really embrace the love and the forgiveness that uh, that should be a part of my life. So don't take it as too much pressure. You know, be perfect as I'm perfect uh, is the goal. And if you fall short of that, welcome to the club. We have all sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. It's not something to beat ourselves up daily, but it's something to remind ourselves each day that there is more to do, as Bill Belichuk said to a 16 and 0 New England Patriots. There is more to do, and we will do that together. Amen. All right, let's uh, go to the next scripture. We have the example of the rich man. And uh, the rich man was challenged by Jesus. He had everything. He had all the riches. He asked Jesus some questions about, you know, you know, what about this? What about that? What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus at that time just kind of went, well, you know, you've got the commandments. You have no other gods. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Honor your mother and your father. Those are the... Uh, uh, you know, some of the commandments and, you know, there's others that, that as we, you know, we go through all 10, but for the sake of time, we'll just focus on that. And so Jesus said unto him, you know, thou will be perfect. Go and sell all that thou has and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. So there it is. There's a 16 and old guy that suddenly went, oh, you got me. I'm so rich. I've got so many possessions. It's all about vanity of vanities. Instead of giving to the poor, I'm looking to make a bigger storage place. I, I need more storage to store all my goods. As we see another case where Jesus says to the guy, why are you building a bigger barn? Well, because I got stuff. I've got more stuff. I've got to go store more stuff. Why don't you give it away? And then you'll be free. And so that's what Jesus says to this, this rich guy. Now, again, a lot of people, oh, look at that. There you go. Uh, people really have a tough time with this verse, but you have heard me say this. That was a specific example for one person, one time on the road. That that young man, Jesus called him out, saw right between him, and looked him in the eyes and in his heart and said, here's something you need to do. You are very covetive. You are very possessive of your possessions. If you want to be perfect, let go of all that you have and follow me. Now, that's something that we can take to heart. That if we do well, and, you know, early on in my walk in the Lord, I can remember, you know, being challenged, the, the Abraham, Isaac sacrifice, the, this scripture right here, and each of us in some way might have dealt with this somewhere along in our walk. It was like, are you going to get rid of everything and follow me? Yes, Lord, I am. And so everything was done, given away. You know, I went, I started off not at zero, but at negative 40,000 was where I started, you know, because I just wanted to serve the Lord, follow the Lord. And from there was able to see the Lord's blessing in my life by making that step of faith and trusting that whatever I gave up in this lifetime would be replaced and in the kingdom to come eternal life. And so that's a challenge. And again, I'm not here to to say that I did any great significant thing. It's not about me. It's about what the Lord is saying to you in your life. You don't need to feel condemned because there is no condemnation. 
If you are walking along and you are praying in the Holy Spirit, then just continue to do that. Realize there's more to do. There's more to come. And let's have a lot of fun rejoicing in the things of the Lord. And if you have significant wealth or the Lord has blessed you through your work, then make sure, again, that you are doing right with it. Nothing wrong with enjoying your prosperity. The Lord promises an abundant life. Go ahead. Enjoy that car. Enjoy that trip. But honor the Lord first in your life. If you are doing that, then you do not, this scripture will not apply to you. If you are having struggles with that or you're finding challenge, pray. Talk to me. We'll take a look at it. We'll see what we can do to, to reorient things. But I think for, for everybody here, and again, when, I, when I'm talking, there's, there's going to be somebody that's going to pick up this video down the road and they're going to listen to it and, and they are going to go, oh, that's speaking to me. But here, the people that are present watching this live, you know, I know everybody's walking. I know that, that there are always little things, but we don't work, worry about the little things. Uh, you know, let's just keep our eyes on the big picture, which is the Lord's coming back. And that's what we want to do. I don't know if you unshared the screen in there, if we're still up on the scriptures, but let's go to the next scripture, which is Romans 12 too. So as we go along, the challenge is be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the transformation. Submit yourself to the Lord. Allow him to change you. Oh, these days you say that and, you know, the, somebody might slap you with a lawsuit. What do you mean I got to change? No, no, no. It's better. It's better. It's better if you come to the Lord. It's better on the other side. What you do in coming to the Lord, what you do in going under the waters of baptism, what you do in being filled with the Holy Spirit is become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That old things are passed away. Everything is new. And you will see the transformation in your life as old habits fall off and are replaced with new good habits, better habits. So these are the things that we look at when we look at that. And we want to understand what the perfect will of God is. If we think about that, wow, do we ever live a happy and abundant life? It's wonderful. Luke 18, verse 10. The story of the two men that went up to pray. And this is the, the other challenge is, are we going to be pompous and arrogant? And think, hey, look at me. I'm so much better than everybody else. Or are we going to be humble and realize that we might have some issues in our life and we're going to come before the almighty God, creator of the heavens and the universe that has the keys and the mercy and the compassion to take the humility that we have and raise us up. So there are two men went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a publican or a tax collector or a government worker down arrow. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Aren't I wonderful? Look at me. And it was all for show. It was all for show. Just look how good I am. And listen, you know, some of the things that the Pharisee did, great, wonderful. You should be doing all of those things. But when you start to brag about it and boast about it and say, look how good I am, you lose your, you, you lose your reward. And that's what Jesus is pointing out here. So in verse 13, and the publican standing afar off would not even lift up his head nor his eyes to heaven, but he smote his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Y el te levantera for our Spanish friends. El te levantera. He will lift you up, up into heaven. And that's the beauty of it. Unshare screen. So we, we have the, the challenge here, doing well, but not bragging about it. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. That if you do something, it's to be done in secret, not to be announced, etc. I mean, I think sometimes all of us, you know, particularly, you know, I was in communications. And so this has always been the challenge is that if you're in government communications or you're out there, the significant thing is to let people know what you're doing. Make sure that it's announced somewhere so that people understand what is going on, what the government is doing and what the scientists are doing. And so for us as a church, it would be nice if somehow, you know, we get out there and we, hey, look at what our church is doing. Look what our church is doing. But that is spoken against in the Bible. It's our works are going to be manifest and people will see them in our walk and our talk. The brother goes in to the supermarket and the checkout teller says, hey, how come you're so happy? Well, because the Lord is in my life. You want to hear more? You come to my church or join us on Zoom. And there you go. Now, I don't know what's going to work for you, but I know what's going to work for me. As for me and my house, we are going to follow the Lord. These are the things. Along the line, we might get fearful. We might get condemned. We might feel like, you know, this is, this is a really hard scripture to follow. Be perfect as I am perfect. But as I said, we've got the, the wonderful, blessed Redeemer of our Heavenly Father that loves and cares for us. So let's go to the next scripture. And we'll finish it off with the next couple of scriptures. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We want to be perfect in love and accept his love and his forgiveness that gets rid of all fear, all doubt, all pain. These are the things to think on in our life, in our walk, is embrace the love. Think about a testimony you've heard. Think about the things that are forgiven. Forgive somebody that you've been holding a grudge against. Maybe there's somebody that you've been angry with or frustrated with or had something against. Forgive me, Father, as I, you know, you know, as I forgive others who have sinned against me. The Lord's Prayer that we all know. These are the challenges and these are the victories. And the promise is that as we walk along that heavenly road, he is going to be guiding our steps. On to glory line. On to the millennium. Let's go down. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed to season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Hallelujah. 
But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. It's a key point that I always bring up. Those people that say, no, granny died and she's in heaven. No, she's sleeping. She's not there yet. It says you got to wait a thousand years before you're there. That's revelation right there. Blessed and holy is he that hath a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Down arrow. That's it. Down arrow. Okay, just stop, sh stop sharing then. Stop sharing. Okay, we're done. All right, well, Praise the Lord that when we take a look at that, that's what we are looking for. The final perfection that if we want to be there, rule and reign with them, there's a simple process. You need to repent, yeah, change your life. You know, you can, two choices. You can live forever, or die forever. You repent, you come to the Lord, you look at the word of God and you, uh, the word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to teach you and lead you into the way of truth. Uh, plan number two, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. And go out and have a lot of fun. Yeah, go to the nightclubs, go party, because you're going to die. And it's going to be a death that's going to lead forever. Don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on the good thing, because obviously the people that are listening to this came here for eternal life. So Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the remission of sins. There's nothing in there about saying a sinner's prayer, signing a pledge card, giving your heart to the Lord. It says be baptized. If you're obedient, you believe in Jesus, you be baptized. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Signs following are in Mark 16, believers will speak in new tongues. If you want to be a part of this ministry, if you want to be a part of the plan and the promise that is laid out in the Bible, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to come to the Lord. And all the people said, hit and stop recording. All right, praise the Lord. We'll turn things over to Brother Bobby. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Mark.